Remember to breathe, cause it'll take your breath away when the engines cough and you blast off. Ignite the night with a firecracker flash. Remember to live, cause you Hello, I'm AxelMC131, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, and it is... <laughs> I mean, last time I was playing this, I said, oh, it's been a while since I was last in the game, and, um, well, this time it has also been a while since I was last in the game, but the shop video should be up much sooner. We'll do a time check for you. It's the 25th of March today, um, and, uh, this will be the next video that I put up, hopefully. So, uh, I have, since the last episode, done a few things, and the first one that you'll notice is the fact that I've got a lot more science than I did before, and that's because I took the uh, lovely little pipsqueak out on another runaround. I'll put some footage over that, of that over this audio, or, well, over this um, footage of the KSC. Uh, and I ran around with some new experiments, because I put um, the uh, press map barometer on it as well as the other experiments, and uh, I think I'd also unlocked the ability to take surface samples, so I ran around doing those, and that's pretty sweet, because those are like worth nine each. So I ended up with about 160 more science. So we're now up to 186, and I'm going to go to research and development, and what I want to do is I want to go and get advanced flight control, because this gives us RCS thrusters at last, which are going to be quite helpful, I think, for when we come to be doing docking and station building and such. So we're going to research that, but I don't know what else to, to research, whether it's landing or aerodynamics. I don't think we need heavy rocketry yet. So it's probably going to be landing or, or um, aerodynamics, but I don't know which. I think we'll de I'll decide later, depending on what I think I need. But for the moment, we have uh, two objectives for, the, for today. We have this, hauling the Mark 55 Thud into flight above Kerbin, and I've uh, made a little rocket plane for that. And then we have hauling the Twitch into a suborbital trajectory, and I've got something very special to show you guys for that. I don't know if the second thing will work, but we can certainly try. So, let's go to the runway and pull out a new vehicle. Here it is. Is it the... was it the lever or the... Oh, the lever is something else. Uh, never mind. That was just me mucking around. The Hummingbird. Uh, and we're going to leave Jeb on board. Why not? In fact, actually, no. We'll put um, Jaunikum, the newest member of our crew, if you remember from last episode. We rescued her from orbit. And she's an engineer, so because we're doing a part test contract, I feel like we're going to need an engineer. So let's uh, launch her in this, and you can have a look at the Hummingbird, which is a new type of plane, so it's got a new designation. And here she is. The Hummingbird X1. A little bit of a bump there. Let's just put the brakes on. Bring out our horses. So this is completely rocket, power, rocket propelled with two of the thud engines. I have reduced their gimbal a little bit because it's just ridiculous without them. We've also got a radiator and a solar panel. I think we've got... Uh, oh yeah, we've got a barometer and this thing can run autonomously, which is why I put the probe at Obedi Um Because I intended to put a uh, Jowner in the whole time, I put a probe core in there so I can do stability assist because engineers can't. We also have a battery and a barometer so that we can do some atmospheric science if we haven't already. But first of all, we're just going to close this and get ready to take off. So the contract wants us to fly, yeah, between 0 and 8 kilometers, which is doable. So we're going to be going sea level and speed at least 320 meters per second, which is about Mark 1. So we're just going to uh, make sure our control surfaces are all lined up correctly. They're quite slow, but they are working. I'm not sure why I'm getting such a bad frame rate, considering this is not a particularly complex craft. But, oh well. Take brakes off and wait till it starts moving. There we go, and fire up the engines. And take off on this thing's pretty easy because it's already got the up angle. You can basically just leave it until it lifts off. Oh yeah, we still have a light on the front. There we go. Whoop, already the front wheel is uh, picking up. There we go. Nice low takeoff speed. So we're just going to cruise until we get up to speed. And I think I will just open this. See if I can get pressure data from... Okay, we already have pressure data while flying on Kerbin, and it's not biome-specific. It's a bit sad, but oh well. Alright, let's, uh... Okay, we're at just under 200 meters, so I'm going to put on some power. Nice. Beautiful mark effects. And this, they actually don't use fuel hugely quick. I can't remember what the ISP is. Yeah, 275 at, at sea level. Okay, 300. 310. 320. Okay. Now we can throttle back, slow down a bit, and then turn around and go back the other way. That's pretty much the objective. 
So we'll wait till we've slowed down a bit, and then we're going to pull up and do a loop, basically. And I do also have a parachute on the back to slow me down on landing. Okay, we're down to... We're going to get down to about 250. That should do it. Let's just gently pull up. Let the G-forces just slow us down a little more, and then we can pull harder. Oh, a few Gs. You're alright there, Jauna. You're fine. We'll just light the engines back up so that we get some power on this. And loop. And roll out of it. Sweet. Silky, silky smooth. It's actually quite a nice plane, this. I did do some flight tests of it just to make sure that it flew, of course. And I'm quite impressed by how much fuel it uses. It's probably got a decent range. I should actually see how far I can get it. Maybe, like, point it in the other direction. Go off towards the mountain and see how far it gets. But for the moment, we'll just cut those. And we'll coast down to the runway from here. Okay, coming in pretty hot, so I'm just going to flare up. It's actually nice and smooth, the control on this, which is quite cool. Okay, we'll just let it slow down. And we'll just glide down until we're on the runway. Come on, lose some more speed. She's going to pre-deploy that parachute about now. And there we go. Just a little bit of a bounce, and pull us out of the air. Bonk. Beautiful. And almost picture-perfect touchdown. Brakes. There we go. Yeah, the brakes on these are not hugely good, which is why I had the parachute on that, because I knew that this thing would be coming in pretty quick, because it's quite heavy with all the rocket fuel, even though it's it's still got half of its fuel left, which is quite good, actually. So we'll try and take that out next time, but uh, there we go. So let's just recover that vessel, and that's one contract complete, and Jana Kerman has reports a successful first official flight of the Hummingbird X-1 and we may be able to put it down to production. The the X will continue to designate prototypes, by the way. Um, so anything that starts with an X is pretty much a prototype. Or still in testing. So we have that. Alright, let's go to the VAB and I can show off the uh, next uh, huh, hopeful thing that I have to complete the other contract we have. This may be a little bit more interesting, so we're going to go in here, we're going to load up something. So if we scroll all the way down, we have the our favourite Sabo BG-1. Now we have the Sabo BG-2. This is a little bit more advanced. For a start, these experimental engines that we have, the uh, Twitch, yeah, so this is the one that we have to fly into suborbital space, between 90 and 100 kilometers, I believe. We've mounted them on the actual Sabo, and we've put... Uh, there's actually two of these Oscar B fuel tanks in there, so we actually have fuel for them. We've also got these different wings, so they should be a little bit more controllable. And we've also got a little fin further up here. Uh, that's about all the changes to it. It does have a battery as well. I think the launch vehicle... Yeah, we're still using an Intrepid 1 launch vehicle. I did move some of the fins down. It's still fairly controllable. Oh, and I've also bound... Did I buy it? Yeah, I bound the action, the Elevons to the ac brakes action group. This is really, really good if you don't have air brakes and you want to like have fins that actually brake for you, so they will actually deploy when I hit the brakes key, like that. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything that we need. There's probably going to be something that it, that'll turn out, I'm sure, but for the... Actually, I have an idea. I'm going to take one of these little linear ports and I'm going to stick it right on the nose there, because I, I remember the when we did, I did a test of this, and it had uh, a slightly l not as bad case, but the same as the f one of the early Sabo prototypes, where it just couldn't pull up, and because it's so streamlined, it just shot down out of the sky into the ground and crashed um, once we ditched that second stage. So I'm just going to put that there, and we can use the onboard monopropellant, we'll make sure to put that back on, so that we can actually... Um, Electron stored but not generated. Oh, that's all right. Uh, actually, I might put I might put a uh, solar panel on this. Why not? There we go. That'll put it up to 30 parts, even though that we our limit is now 255. I'm just gonna offset that down so it's flush with the top. That's a bit better. Okay, but this should be good. Sabo BG2. We will put a pilot on board. We've got Jeb. Yep, we are good to go. And we'll put um, we'll put Bill on board just so that he can 
he's our other engineer, so he can make sure that the engines are performing their duty. Um, yeah, that should be all we need. Alright, let us get ready to go. Alright, and here we are on the launch pad, and it's time to go. So, we'll turn the lights on, because why not? Throttle up to two-thirds, SAS on, everybody ready? Looks like. Okay, get ready to go in three, two, oh, one. And there we go, our Apple Apps is just above 90 kilometers, which is uh, just high enough for this um, contract should be completed. And uh, yeah, we're on our way out of the atmosphere. Now we only have a little tiny bit of fuel left in this tank, which is the problem that I had with the testing of this, and why we got the old flipping over too early and then not being able to pull up in time. So hopefully we'll be able to fix that, because I've also moved, I think I've moved the wings slightly further forwards, and um, we've got that, that little... Um, RCS thruster up at the top there, well up at the front, so that should be able to save us in case of emergency, because we've got we have plenty of monopropellant for a single thruster, and then we have, of course we have gimbling on these engines, but now we are in space, so let's actually just time warp up, Weeping. and that is contract 2 of 2 complete, and we've got 5 science for that, and 40,000 funds, very nice, and now it's time to come back. And I'm hoping that I've targeted this decently, because I kind of wanted to do the same thing and land, like, on the launch pad. But it's quite hard often to go up and then account for the rotation of the planet. I mean, this is where this is where the launch pad was when I, when I launched. So, it's probably going to be about there. So, depending on how I do this, I should be okay? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, and um, you'll now know that if I press B for the brakes, these will extend. So I've got that advantage as well. That's on um, key. All right, let's go back down. All right, I'm going to start burning the engine here because we're coming in at 900 meters per second. I'm just going to switch back to service mode. Surf service mode. Surface mode. And I want to slow down with this fuel before it gets too late. So I'm going to do that now, I think. Gonna use the rest of the fuel in this, and then ditch it. Bye bye. Stay on target. Nope. We're gonna flip over backwards. Flip over forwards, please. Okay. The. All right. Let's just turn the SAS off for a moment. Let it just stabilize. Oh. Come on. I'm trying to roll it. There we go. Okay. And now we can pull up. And that should hopefully just progressively slow us down. Yeah, we're slowing down pretty fast there. 700 meters per second, 699. Okay, let's just kick that RCS thruster in. Is that going to help? Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to engage these. No, they're just going to make us go faster. But we're only pulling about 4 Gs of deceleration, so I think that we're alright. We're at 300 meters per second. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, this is ridiculous. Pull the chute. <laughs> okay. I, I, that's quite interesting, because in the test that I did, it was able to pull up um, at a much high, at about that speed, and this one wasn't for some reason. I'm not sure why. can't think of any of the changes that I made that may have caused that, but oh well. We didn't really need the engines on it, but we have them anyway, so we can kind of move forwards. Yeah, we're not getting back to the space plane hangar with this. Okay, let's just descend back into the ocean and hopefully not explode. Time warp. 
Actually, we might be able to get a surface sample from the water, which I don't think we have had yet. So I'm just gonna nose down. Wow, that was a loud splash. I think this is one of probably one of the biggest things to land in the water, actually. I've just realized I don't think we've landed the Sabo in the water before. Hmm. Uh, can we get out? Oh, your hatch is sorry. Jeb. Get out. Boing. Yay! Once you stop shaking around like a leaf, take surface sample. Plus 12 science. It appears to dramatically increase the surface humidity of anything it touches. There will be a good reason for that, Jeb. Oh, uh, I'd like to be able to get in, please. Alright. Hmm, there's some interesting stuff going on here. I'm gonna transfer Bill into the crew compartment so that he can tra move. I have no idea what's going on here. Okay. Roll a bit. Roll and try and hold that roll while I switch back to. Huh? Eh? Eh? Board. Oh, can't board a full much. Okay. Well, he's attached, so let's just. What is going on every time I switch camera? Crew hatch. Transfer to there. Switch back to Jeb. Board. The pff. I don't know what's going on here. There's some weird glitching going on. It's kind of freaky. It's like every time I switch camera, the entire thing just starts shaking around. Oh well, time to um, recover the vessel, I suppose. And the vessel has been recovered. Awesome. Surface sample from Kerbin's water. 12 science. Wonderful. And our lovely fun's recovered. A little bit far away. Oh yeah, I probably should have pointed out that something else that I did with the um, pipsqueak on the last mission was put uh, the flag at the other end of the runway. So we now have one on the east and one on the west. So that'll make life a little bit easier when flying planes. Uh, and yeah, I think that that will just about wrap it up for today's missions, though. So we do still have oh, two man. more contracts, I believe. Yes, orbit the moon, and we also want to build a new orbital station around Kerbin. I can't remember if I showed this in a video, uh, accepting this contract, but I have. And this is the annoying one that has, like, the criteria of having at least 2,000 units of liquid fuel at the station. Maybe? I mean, perhaps? This early game... I think we can probably manage that, but in several launches. But Orbit the Moon we can definitely do. But, uh, well... Anything new? Science data from space around Kerbin. Hey, we could do that now. Surface outpost on the moon. Four tourists to various places. Satellite in a specific order. Minmus. Uh, don't think so. Let's just go and get complete that science contract now. Because here is the wonder of having something in orbit. Oh, and that actually reminds me, there's so many things that I keep forgetting to mention today. I have actually um, updated a few, like, mod configs. Well, configs of, like, parts that I've modded. Uh, I've added a few, like, one or two more, I think. Uh, we won't go into the details of them until, like, I unlock them. Um, but I've also, like, made some texture changes. And the Mayfly now uses the same particle effect as the Ion Thruster, the stock Ion Thruster, which is pretty damn cool. So we're actually just going to, while we're here, we'll just... Log pressure data and transmit, -na -na -na, and contract complete. Um, but initially, I'd use the one from the um, the little ant engines, the little white cloudy thing, which doesn't look so nice. But I've changed the iron particle. The ion particle is incredibly cool. So let's actually just wow. Okay, I'm just going to point like retrograde, and we can just drop this thing into a slightly lower orbit. Is it just me, or has this thing got more torque than it used to? Okay, but well, just light at the engine so you can see. Just observe the beauty of this. This looks like a real rocket engine. How a real, like, orbital engine should. Are you ready? How pretty is that? Have you ever seen something so pretty in the stock? <laughs> well, not stock game, but yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I've had I had fun doing that, and it's really quite awesome. But yeah, uh, stop wasting fuel, I may need a use for this again. But we'll just go back to the Space Center, and that, I think, will uh, wrap it up for today. So, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. I've been Axel MC131, and I'll see you next time. My
Hey guys, Axel here with a quick shout out to the creator of some absolutely awe-inspiring music, one Grace Wood. As her older cousin, I am incredibly proud of her for winning the Lion Foundation Songwriting Competition for 2015, as organised by the Play It Strange Trust. Her new song, Young, Naive and Reckless, is a fantastic example of her incredible talent, and I strongly suggest you head over to her newly founded YouTube channel, or her SoundCloud, and show Grace and her music some love. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Point us a pathway leading